G'day guys, Chris from the Ultimate Recycler. Part two now of this house clean out, which was a bit more of a pickers exhibition. Um, morning, Christine. Hello. We're going through boxes as we usually do, processing stuff. Now, as I said, this was more of a pickers adventure because we didn't have to take the rubbish, we didn't have to clean up, so we just got to pick out what we wanted. Um, much better business-wise, not as much work. But we do have to pay for deals like this, of course, which we're still yet to work out a final figure. We did pay the lady, as you saw in the first episode, but we will be keeping track of everything. Now, this Mixmaster is a really cool item. My mum had one of these um, original booklet for it. It's probably 1950s, maybe early 60s. Got the two milk glass bowls, and they sell very well on their own because people drop them. Um, I guess buttery fingers and their glass but these are original Sunbeam ones. So we do need to check some prices on some of this stuff. And of course we need to test things. I was just about to switch this um, Mixmaster on. It's, I've got it through my safety tester and a RCD to make sure we're safe. And oh look, we're, we're beating up the price tag. <laughs> uh, that sounds good. Now sometimes these the variable speed doesn't work. This one sounds awesome. And it tests out safe, so that's good. We'll um, we'll get. I reckon we'd get sixty bucks, maybe seventy for that one in good working order. So that's something when we're when we're picking. There's a fair chance we brought that home, and it, it mightn't have been any good. So we will adjust our prices as we uh, go through and process it all. Okay, another morning processing. We're up to item number eighty-eight. For those of you who haven't seen our videos before, we do have to itemise everything as far as the second-hand dealer's license goes in Australia. Uh, as you can see with our um, estimated prices there, most of them are, are fairly cheap items, but there were a few that we've found that we've priced up a bit. So this is the table full of stuff that has been processed, and now we'll distribute it between our two shops. Um, there is some nice English china. Um, that's just a candlestick, but it is mailing, which is a good quality English china. It used to be very collectible. Doesn't bring what it used to now, of course. Royal Albert's another nice one. Uh, there's a bit of a range of materials. This is one of the better items, the percolator. I think I picked it out in the first video. We put 45 on that. It's a Pyrex one. Christine's moving some stuff nice, around. Nice vase, that one. Yeah, nice big purple uh, jug or pitcher or ewer. I think it's just a jug. It would have had a glasses set, probably. But we put 30 on that. It's going to look great in the window. I think this one would be... 1960s and by the look of the base it's possibly Polish or Czechoslovakian they tend to have made a lot of glassware in the 60s like that uh, more English China there's a few books uh, a bit of 80s Australian pottery uh, some decanters this is probably one of the better items we've found so far it's not actually marked there's no etching but it just feels such nice quality perfect condition beautiful crystal decanter really good weight to it and the top i just take it down here so i don't drop it the top is um very nicely fitted it's, it hasn't got a plastic insert that you see on the modern decanters so we put 75 on that one uh, we may or may not get that of course but it's a starting price in the shop uh, whereas this other decanter right next to it i've only got ten dollars on and it's a cheaper glass it's just pressed even though it looks like crystal and it's got a plastic insert, so it's probably more of a 70s or 80s. Some of these decanters were even just sold as bottles of alcohol and you used the bottle when you emptied it. Uh, the clocks I need to do a bit more research on and just make sure they go properly. So uh, yeah, we're getting through it. We've got still got a pile of crates here to go through. And um, then once we finish all the glass and china, we'll get into the shed stuff. And after another stint of morning processing and pricing, we've got another table full of things. That's just a silver plate teapot. We only put $10 on that. EPNS, or uh, electroplated nickel silver as it's known, is pretty hard to sell these days. This one needs a good polish. It's got a few dints. And you can see that sort of dull area around the top. That's actually the base metal. That's the nickel silver which really doesn't contain silver. Nickel silver is an alloy of copper and tin, I think, or a few other bits. I just forget off the top of my head, but it doesn't contain silver. It's more of a brassy look. And so that's just been over-polished. So that's never going to come back to nice and shiny unless you have it replated, and it's seriously not worth it. So someone will buy it for 10 bucks. There's a bit more china. 
some English trios. Now, they're not particularly well uh, collected brands. This one's just a Queen Anne. Um, they used to sell really well. I used to get $25 to $30 a trio. We've only got 15 on that. It just reflects how English China has dropped in value. So there's a few of those. There's an 80 era um, teapot or coffee pot, I think that is. We've only got $5 on that. This is a nicer teapot, as in it's a bit better shape. The silver plating's in a bit better condition. There is a dent there on the side. But it's more of an attractive teapot. We priced that up a little bit more. I think we might have put 20 on that. Uh, yep, 20. This is a very very early piece. It's more a Victorian piece. It is in pretty good condition. There's no damage. But again, China just doesn't bring what it used to bring. I think we might have put 20. Oh, we put 30 on that one. But it's a nice little piece. Uh, some sort of 60s or 70s retro era jugs. They're quite, or jug and sugar bowl. They're quite nice. A lot of five and ten dollar items again. Even some modern stuff. Those, uh, they're novelty serviette holders. They're actually made out of wood, I think. They're probably quite recent. I think it's Philippines that sticker says. But someone will like them. We'll probably get ten dollars for those. Uh, there was a Victor two stroke mower fuel can, which these are very collectible. Uh, and that's not in bad condition. We put 45 on that one. Uh, and this was a nice old piece. This is a an English-made pewter uh, desk inkwell. And it's got the original uh, ceramic or pottery inkwell. And these are the same as what used to go in the school desks. You often see those double school desks which have holes in the front of the timber and these used to drop in there. They're mostly missing. They're hard to get. Uh, and the holes around the side would have been for you to, to rest the quill in between writing. So it's a little beaten up, but it is a nice piece. And you don't see those sort of things very often. We haven't actually priced that tag there, but I would probably have, I think I'd have $20, $25 on that. Better put that one aside to write a price on it. Box brownie cameras are very common, but they're very collectible all the same. There's a whole multitude of different models. Um, they're pretty cool to use. I can remember using one of these as a kid. Uh, but people like cameras. They're nostalgic. We've got 30 on that. And that's interesting that 10 to 15 years ago, I might have only got 15 to $20 for one of those. Now I'll get 30 And yet, in the same time frame, I would have got 25 to 30 for that. And now I only get 15 So prices are in a constant state of flux. And you kind of need to be doing it all the time to have a bit of a, an idea. This is a, a little um, film camera. I think it's a Super 8 or something they call it. Uh, they're collectible. People don't really use them as such, but they make nice displays. I think we might have put $20 on that original cases with it. Uh, so that's about what we've gone through today. And we'll just keep unpacking these crates. Uh, this is all that's left of the household stuff, these few crates. Uh, I've mentioned before, we do save all our newspaper and reuse it. It's handy when you're in packing up a house to have a box full of newspaper ready to go. Eventually it gets too tatty and I'll probably feed it to my worms. Uh, and this big platter I didn't touch on. It's late Victorian, 1880s perhaps. They're known as a charger, but they're basically just a large serving platter. Very thick china. The pattern's pretty common of the era. I think it's called Asiatic pheasants or something to that effect and on the back you'll see uh, there's a nice early mark here um, I'm not sure if you can read that through the camera oh, it actually says Asiatic pheasants on there so that'd be English made and that's in pretty good condition quite often these are chipped and cracked and badly stained but we've put $50 on that and I think that will sell quite well to look good on a cabinet on a plate stand so there you go we'll um, keep going with this um, unpacking and pricing that's probably where a lot of our time goes on these deals and we'll be into the shed stuff soon and I'll show you what I found in the shed and yet another table full after this morning's processing efforts uh, we've finished the pile of crates but Kristen reminded me that there was some cardboard boxes full of kitchen stuff so they'll be in the van too uh, we had in this lot we'll quickly scan across there's a barometer um, part of the frame is broken and I'm not sure that the barometer actually works because the needle under there is set past dry and we're not really in a drought here. So 
I might have to have a quick look at that. There's a silver plate butter dish. Uh, not particularly old. It kind of probably looks older than it is. Uh, but butter dishes seem to sell very well. I'm not going to polish it. It's too much effort. We only put $10 on that. Uh, these big wooden tulips are just a novelty thing. They're not even very old. I think we've got $5 there. There's some modern stuff. These art glass lollies are probably pretty modern. Uh, I don't think they're Murano ones. They're more likely to be Chinese. Bit of general household bits and pieces. Some silver plate, which is really difficult to sell these days. I think we've got $5 each on those. This was a nice find. This is a, I think this is a letter scale. Uh, let me get it away from all this clutter so you can see. And they're like postal scales for weighing letters. It weighs in ounces. A uh, pretty cool little item. Not particularly special, but I think that's a $50 item without any problems. Nice to find those. It makes our shops very interesting finding things like that. Uh, this is really nice. I don't think this is very old. It's probably Bohemian glass, but it's very attractive. It's uh, got an etched scene on it. So the glass itself isn't red. It's just flashed red. And what they do is grind the flashing off and it, then it, you get that two color effect. So that's a pretty nice piece. We put $20 on that. It'll look great in the window. Bit of other glassware, some large crystal bowls, but they're a little bit chippy around the inside. Don't get a lot for crystal. Uh, a nice sort of retro-y Japanese milk jug and sugar bowl. I think we put 20 on that. A bit of cutlery, some very old stuff, but... Um, there's just bits and pieces and they're reasonably, some of them are a bit damaged. They're kind of only 5 to $8 each on some of those. Uh, a vintage Ever Ready torch. It doesn't go, but it's kind of cool looking. We might have only had 5 on that. Uh, what else have we got up here? A bit of sort of tribal stuff. I don't know, it might be from the island, one of the islands, I'm not sure. Uh, but these sort of freaky kind of things sell okay. They're, they're a great decorator item. We put 20 on that one. We often get face masks and things. They're not necessarily that old. They're probably made for the, the tourist market. But they do sell well and they make the shop look good. Uh, just some general cutlery. The campers will buy that for five bucks a lot. There was a nice finger lamp in here if I can get it out. It's um really good condition. It actually would... And the price tag's under. There we go. It would be in working condition. Um... It's a fairly common design, but these lamps are great. They sell well. Uh, it's not damaged. And I did a video once on identifying an antique lamp from a reproduction. And if you've watched that one, you'll see that this is a, a genuine early lamp. It's probably not in 20s, maybe 30s. And we've got 75 on that. Even though it's clear glass, I'm going to put that over on the other bench because I don't want to drop it. Uh, even though it's clear glass, that will sell quite well. There was a heap, while well, we're over here, there was a heap more cutlery, uh, bone-handled knives and whatnot. That's a fish set. They don't sell as well as the normal bone-handled knives. And oh, there's just some silver plate cutlery there. We've got $10 in a lot. It's all part of the same set. But these knives, uh, these do sell really well. And you can see how the value adds up here. There's, uh, I think there was 11 in here. So one small handful of knives should, should bring back about 50 bucks into our pockets. So always good value finding those. People love these because they, well, partly they remind them of their childhood, you know, or being at Nana's house. But they're very good steel. They're great for, um, for buttering toast and that sort of thing. The only thing you have to be careful of is that you shouldn't wash the handles in hot water because they will break down after a while. But there's some good value there. There was a drinks carrier thing here, but the glasses have been well used and there's one obviously come to grief. You can see the gold bands have totally worn off some of them. I think we only put 10 on that set. There's a crystal dressing table set there. Uh, we put 30 on that, but uh, they are a little bit hard to sell. There's a, that's the ring holder, a little vase and a lidded container. Uh, they do turn up in green glass, in uranium glass, and they sell much better. I think they also turn up in pink as well. Uh, what else was on the table? There's a, a camping gas light, uh, some old handbags, a large pewter German stein. They're all just 5 to $10 items. So it's going to really work out well in the multiplication 
effect because you know you only need a hundred items at ten dollars and you've got a thousand bucks so it does add up that way so that's the bulk of the kitchen stuff we do have a few more boxes but um, we've got to start unloading the back of the van we'll probably do that tomorrow good morning everyone another morning out on the street Christine's Hello. morning Christine she's playing a game of reverse Tetris I think she <laughs> called it which is basically trying to unpack things without having an avalanche of boxes of things and I do have to admit that I did stack one little box of cotton reels and it slipped down and there's now cotton reels all over, all the, over the place all over the place but that's all right adds to the challenge so we're unpacking here we're going through some of the shed stuff there's a bit more house stuff uh, spreading it out here so that when you sort it out it's early oh, it's probably about quarter to eight I suppose sun's getting up a bit high now it's going to be a hot day so we wanted to do this before it got too hot um, we'll hopefully get the van emptied and everything just goes to respective places for now like a lot of these boxes of small things will go into the kitchen where we'll process them in the morning things some things will need testing like that globe lamp um, we're up to item 196 by the looks of that um, there are some nice bits that come out of the house that's quite a nice towel rail I'm not sure how old that one is I think we just put 30 or might have been 40 dollars on that one uh, and this thing we looked at in the first video I think is actually called a toilet mirror it's Victorian it's a, a veneer though and it's not in very good condition uh, and one of those pivots is a bit damaged so yes it's not the best these used to sell really well back in the 80s and 90s but uh, yeah, not a lot of value there now in that condition uh, would probably go about 30 or 40 bucks I'd say starting to get into some of the shed stuff there's a few close the gate signs they're just plastic ones some of the stuff I grabbed from the shed that we need to sort out the fireplace stuff isn't particularly good quality it's kind of 1990s uh, copper art stuff but it still sells okay there's some tables here I got out of the shed that I think we have the legs for somewhere and I'm not sure if they're homemade or not looks like it may be but uh, they'll sell quite well and these card tables people do buy them that have market stalls and as long as they're not too wonky they'll sell quite well and that's a tub I packed from the shed I think yeah. and oh this so might have come from the office because there's some there's a tray of buttons and all sorts of bits and pieces in there so we have to have a sort through that one morning all right well, we better get back to it we want to try and get this van emptied before it gets too hot now here's the bike and the mower that I grabbed out of the shed the bike was in a little garden shed it's in such good condition and such original condition that I'm actually going to do a bit of a restoration project on that it needs tires and tubes it's got a little bit of surface rust but I like that all the transfers look original uh, the pedals and all the light fittings I think they're all original it's probably a 1980s one it's a Malvern Star or a family star which was a, a good Australian brand the Malvern Star they've been around for a long time even probably the original headlight so I'm going to save that for a future video I'll do a bit of a restoration on that for the purposes of this video I'm going to value that at 50 bucks because I think I'd have no troubles getting 50 for it as it is as a project and exactly the same scenario with the lawnmower it's a classic Victor two-stroke uh, Australian brand uh, looks looks complete it might be a good restoration I have not pulled the rope if I was to sell that as it is, I'd put 50 on it as well. Uh, the only reason, probably the main thing that convinced me to do a resto on it is that I know my Victor mowers pretty well. I was a, a small engine mechanic for a long time. And this is all original. And the wheels, the bushes in the wheels, there's virtually no wear. There's no slop to the front axle bushes. The wheels don't wobble at all. So I'd suggest this one has spent much more of its time sitting around a shed than what it's ever done mowing lawns. So we'll do a restoration project on that one down the track as well. But as far as valuations here for this video go, I'm going to write down $50 each. And as for the stereo gear, well this one does have issues. Uh, I did plug it in to see if it operates and the turntable seized up. Uh, one of the uh, hinges on the plastic top is broken. The switches seem very tight. That one in particular can barely turn. The volume feels scratchy. So that one needs 
work and I'm only going to value that at let's say $30 as a project for someone but I, I reckon it might find its way down to my shed and maybe I'll do a restoration on that one as well. The main reason to, uh, I've decided on that is that it's not only an early 70s model but it's actually um, has quadraphonic sound capabilities and you don't find those very often. So you've got mono, stereo and four channel. So I think that's going to be worth restoring. And the other one, the other big one which we found in the lounge, I've tried to power this one up. We couldn't find the top for it. The lady uh, Carmel thought it was in the shed, but I couldn't find it. Um, I've powered it up, but no lights come on. The turntable tries to turn, but I think the rubber drive wheels perished. Uh, and being a, a three-in-a-one cassette radio and turntable they're not as sought after as the the really good top quality vintage hi-fi gear um so i don't think it's got a huge value even in good going order so i'm not going to waste any time on that one we'll probably just put 20 dollars on that in the shop and someone will buy it for either parts or a project now these two clocks uh, when i first spotted these i thought they would probably be the best things we get out of the deal and i did allow a bit for them they're both sort of 1900 through to 1920, perhaps this bigger one's Edwardian, probably about 1910, uh, very Edwardian features. The other one's a bit more Art Nouveau. They're both American made, uh, and I was hoping they were they would run okay, but it turns out that neither of them go. Uh, the larger one won't go at all, and I've had to chock it to get it level, and it still won't work. The other one runs for a little while, but uh, it's clearly something wrong. So whether it's just a service or a more major repair, I'm not sure. So for the purposes of this video, we're going to allow, let's say, $75 each. So $150 for the pair to retail them as they are. I will get them going, but that will be uh, outside of the scope of this deal. And I'll probably do a video on the repair of them at some stage. So that will do for part two of this series. Uh, as you can see, we've got a full list of items here we ended up with quite a lot of stuff and in part three we'll give you all the final facts and figures we actually have sold bits of quite a bit of it as we've gone they did turn out to be some really good treasures so you may be surprised with the top 10 and we were actually surprised because a few of them we put on ebay and they did very well for us things that we didn't really even notice when we were packing up and that's often the case on these deals so um yeah, look out for part three. I'll bring that to you shortly and we'll give all the final figures, how much profit we made, whether we'll actually go and see Carmen and give us some extra money for uh, for our, um, our deal and what actually did make the top 10. So we'll catch you then. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.